We present for you your acceptance of the ideals which guide members of the society. The first ideal is that of fidelity to humanity. This ideal implies faith in the potential of human beings and in the improvement of the human condition through education, compassion in the contacts one has as an educator with humanity, and dedication to the concept that through continuous education based upon equal opportunity, persons of all ages, races, and creeds will find increased opportunity for experiencing more meaningful lives. All of this is implied in the ideal of fidelity to humanity. Do you accept this ideal of service? If so, you will answer, I do. <laughs> the second ideal is the ideal of science. This ideal implies that, as an educator, one will be faithful to the cause of free inquiry and strive to eliminate prejudice and superstition by withholding judgment until accurate and adequate evidence is obtained. One will not distort evidence to support a favorite theory, not be blinded by, this, by the new or spectacular, nor condemn the old simply because it's old. All of this is implied in the ideal of science. Do you accept this ideal of toil, if so, science. of science? If so, you will answer, I do. I do. The third ideal is that of service. This ideal is the very essence of education which seeks advancement, not merely for self, but for society as well. The incentive of the great educators of the world has been their desire to serve humanity. Service in education implies living so that others are strengthened and inspired, and striving for the achievement of justice, peace, and a better way of life for all. All of this is implied in the ideal of service. Do you accept this ideal of service? If so, you will answer, I do. The final ideal is that of toil. The will to do the task that must be done, whether the task pleases one or not. And the faith in social necessity and intrinsic reward of the education profession. It implies working with such faith and zeal that others are one to the cause of education. If one life has been given greater freedom and nobler vision, toil has not been in vain. All of this is implied in the ideal of toil. Do you accept this ideal of toil? If so, you will answer, I do. Our society's emblem incorporates the scroll, the stylus, and the beehive, and the characters K, Kappa, Delta, Pi. Many of the treasures of antiquity, which form the foundation of modern education, rest upon scrolls of papyrus. The golden scroll, therefore, is the foundation of our emblem. The shaft running through the scroll is the stylus, the first instrument known to be used in making letters and figures. The beehive symbolizes toil. The characters, Kappa, Delta, Pi, represent our motto, knowledge, duty, and power. Words expressing the entire meaning of our educational ideals. The purpose and ideals of Kappa, Delta, Pi are now known to you. Are you ready to assume the obligation of membership in Kappa, Delta, Pi? If so, you will answer, I am. I am. Please repeat after me the obligation of the society. I promise to abide by the constitutions and bylaws of Kappa Delta Pi. I promise to abide by the constitutions and bylaws of Kappa Delta Pi. And to cooperate to expand the influence of its purpose and ideals. I now declare you members of Kappa Delta Pi, International Honor Society in Education, pledged to be faithful to its ideals and worthy to enter into the bonds of fellowship with its members. I 
going to call each of you forward individually. I'd like you to come across the stage here. You'll receive your pin and your certificate. When you get that, you shake hands with Dr. Newman and your president and come down this way. Okay, and we'll back and stand by your seat. Jahan Hektar. Mari Salamaro is not here. Marinis Baluha. Roxana Chavez, Kristen Cruz Fajardo, Edie Stella Fay, Maggie Enriquez, Annie Examen. Francis Frazier is not here. Danielle Harrard. <laughs> Janet Herrera. Jaya Narain. Enrique Nadal. Well, you have long pants on. <laughs> That's Rick. Gabrielle Padron. <laughs> Stephanie Papili. <laughs> Rosa Reyes is not here this evening. Pauline Rios. Raquel Schifrin. for a full, knowledgeable, and useful life. We are united in a profession whose purpose and challenge is to inspire young and old to grow by using their heritage, to develop a concern for the needs of others, and to strengthen moral character and personality so that collectively, as members of Kappa Delta Pi, we may be worthy of examples of a rich, wholesome life. To these purposes and challenges, in firm faith, we devote our lives. So to teach, that our words inspire a will to learn. So to serve, that each day may enhance the growth of exploring minds. So to live, that we may guide young and old to know the truth and love the right. To the fulfillment of these objectives, we pledge our efforts and faith. It is my privilege and honor to congratulate you and welcome you into Kappa Delta Pi. It's fast and furious. Fast and furious because we are not going to drip any wax. And we're no wax and no smart alarms going on. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, quickly. Pass the torch and then we're going to have the torch. That's it.
looks pretty. All right, now go to now. You may be seated. Okay. Congratulations. Yay. Uh, Victoria Hernandez, who is the director of the legislative office of Miami Dade College. She has a few words to share with us. No, she is not here. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Then, oh my goodness. What's going on here? What's happening? All right. Be very careful coming up and down the stage tonight. Right. So, Dr. Susan Neiman. Good evening. I would like to add my congratulations to those already shared. Congratulations to our new initiates and their families, and congratulations to our officers and members of Kappa Delta Pi. I would also like to congratulate and extend my appreciation to Dr. Melinda Prog and Dr. Lauren Gatch, our faculty advisors, without whom this organization would not exist at Miami Dade College. And we are so fortunate to have their dedication and devotion to our students. So thank you. <laughs> New initiates, your academic excellence and dedication to the teaching profession has earned you the opportunity to belong to Kappa Delta Pi, the world's largest association of outstanding education professionals. Kappa Delta Pi is a dynamic community of exceptional educators committed to promoting excellence in the education profession by recognizing and advancing scholarship, service, and leadership. Scholarship, service, and leadership. As I reflected on these concepts, their importance for the present and the future became abundantly clear. All of us in this room believe in the importance of scholarship, of knowledge, of learning, of research, of study. And all of us in this room believe in the importance of service, of benefiting others, of assisting, of giving. In fact, we have dedicated our lives to this concept in becoming and being teachers. But Kappa Delta Pi is also dedicated to leadership. I always wonder about leadership, and I wonder about the passing of the baton of leadership from one generation to the other. Leadership has been described as the process of influence in which one person can enlist the aid and support of others in the accomplishment of a common task. <laughs> I prefer the concept of leadership as creating a way for people to contribute to making something extraordinary happen. As teachers, you are the educational leaders in your classrooms. But as Kappa Delta Pi teachers, you are charged with making something extraordinary happen. Kappa Delta Pi initiates, we look to you for leadership in the future. We look to you to inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. We look to you to continue the change that has occurred over the past decades and to have a vision of the future. Ralph Waldo Emerson, famous poet, wrote, a leader has the vision and conviction that a dream can be achieved. He or she inspires the power and energy to get it done. I wish you all good luck as you take your place in KVP as education <laughs> leaders. How fortunate we are this evening to have as our keynote speaker a true leader and visionary, Congresswoman Ileana ross -Layton. For those of us who have lived in Miami-Dade County for years, her name is synonymous with outstanding commitment, tireless dedication, and visionary leadership. Since her election in 1989 to the United States Congress, she has proudly represented Florida's 18th Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. 
Forced to leave with her family from the oppressive communist regime of Fidel Castro, she became the first Hispanic woman and first Cuban American elected to Congress. Throughout her life, she has been dedicated to serving our community. After completing public education in Miami and graduating from Miami-Dade Community College, She followed her passion for education and earned a Bachelor of Arts in Education from Florida International University. She then founded and served as principal and teacher of a private bilingual elementary school in Hialeah. Her passion for education continued while completing a master's in educational leadership at FIU and earning a doctorate of higher education from the University of Miami. Understanding the issues facing South Florida, she was elected in 1982 to the Florida State House of Representatives, becoming the first Hispanic woman in that body. In 1986, she was elected to the Florida State Senate. While serving, she met and married fellow Florida legislator Dexter Leighton, who became the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Florida. They have two children, Amanda Michelle and Patricia Marie, and two stepchildren, Catherine and Douglas. When the 18th Congressional District seat was vacated by the passing of Claude Pepper in 1989, she won the seat and has been strongly returned to Congress since, winning 62% of the vote in 2006. Congresswoman Ileana ross Leitonin has been a strong leader in the United States Congress, fighting to advance the needs of South Florida and ensuring that the nation continues to prosper. Addressing the needs of the unique community in South Florida, she has worked so our precious ecosystems are preserved for future generations to enjoy. She has consistently opposed any efforts to drill off Florida's coast. Thank you. In addition to preventing offshore drilling, she fought to secure an excess of $27 million to provide for the dredging of the Miami River, ensuring that the river remains a vibrant natural resource. This important project removes, removes contaminated material from the river, protecting coral reefs and other important marine life in Biscayne Bay. She has voted consistently on helping homeowners not lose their homes during this period of market uncertainty. She voted in favor of the American Housing Rescue and Foreclosure Prevention Act, which recently passed the House. This legislation provides mortgage refinancing assistance to keep families from losing their home, protects neighboring home, neighboring home values, and helps stabilize the housing market. She also supported the National Affordable Housing Trust Fund Act. This bill establishes a National Affordable Housing Trust Fund to build or preserve over a million homes over the next decade. Increasing the supply of affordable housing will help ensure that South Florida families who have lost their homes can find housing. Congresswoman Ross Leitonin voted in favor of the Economic Stimulus Act of 2008. This bipartisan legislation was enacted as an effort to reinvigorate the economy and help hardworking South Floridians who are struggling with rising costs of fuel and groceries. She has worked hard to lower the burden of high taxes on families so that they keep more of their money. She has supported legislation to lower the income tax rate, eliminate the debt tax, and reduce the marriage penalty tax. She co-sponsored 401 Kids Family Savings Act to allow tax-free distributions from a Coverdell education savings account for first-time homebuyer expenses and permit rollovers from Coverdell Education Savings Account to Roth Individual Retirement Accounts. She also co-sponsored the Financial Security Accounts for Individuals with Disabilities Act to establish tax-exempt financial security accounts for individuals with disabilities to pay certain expenses of such individuals, including expenses for education, medical care, and employment training. Given the importance of the Port of Miami to the South Florida economy and its position as the gateway to, Ameri to the Americas, it is vital that the Port receives the security it requires to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Congressman Ross Leitonin fought to bring attention to the critical needs of our Port, which are high priority targets for those who aim to inflict chaos in the United States. Working with the County Port of Miami officials in the state of Florida, she ensured that the cargo facilities are equipped with security resources to keep their important piece of infrastructure safe, in turn protecting the local community and the economy. 
As a former educator, she has been a strong voice for addressing the education needs of our community. While in the Florida Senate, she introduced legislation to create Florida's first prepaid college tuition plan. This plan has enabled students to attend college, equipping them with the resources to reach their highest ambitions. Without this plan, many of you would not have been able to take advantage of your educational opportunity. Continuing her support for the education of our future leaders, she recently voted in favor of ensuring continued access to Student Loans Act. This will give the Department of Education the authority to purchase student loans from lenders, increase the, subsidized, the unsubsidized Stanford loan limit, and provide an, optima, an optional grace period so that parents can defer certain loan payments until after their children graduate. She has been a strong advocate of programs that address the serious problem of violence against women. As a co-sponsor of HR 2876, which reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act, Congressman Ross Layton sent a strong message to the community that violence against women is unacceptable and ensured that programs to address this problem continue to be funded in the future. Congressman Ross Layton is the ranking member on the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. Serving in this role, she has been a tireless advocate for the advancement of human rights across the globe, as well as continuing to be a strong voice in opposition to Castro's dictatorial regime in Cuba. This marks the long involvement in foreign affairs, having previously served as chair of the Subcommittee on the Middle East and Central Asia, the Subcommittee on Africa, the Subcommittee on International Opportunities, operations and human rights and as vice chair of the subcommittee on the western on the western hemisphere it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage our keynote speaker supreme visionary dedicated leader and proud graduate of miami day college <laughs> Uh, Susan for that uh, incredibly warm uh, introduction. I'm, I'm thrilled uh, to be here. Thank you for taking the time to put that uh, whole introduction together. Thank you to uh, whoever was responsible for inviting me uh, to be the speaker. Uh, as Susan pointed out, I am a proud graduate of Miami-Dade College. And, uh, I graduated with uh, Fred Flintstone and uh, Barney Rubble. Uh, I don't even know what year that was, but it was a long time ago. And it was 1972. It was then called Miami-Dade Junior College. And then it became Miami-Dade Community College. And now, of course, an incredible four-year institution, Miami-Dade College. And I graduated from what used to be called the, uh, the South Campus. And I think it's now called the Kendall Campus, correct? And I had the opportunity to, uh, uh, to take uh, uh, some uh, some students over to the campus the other day uh, as they were registering, et cetera. Some uh, friends of the family encouraged them to uh, enroll there, and they did. And uh, I was just astounded by by the growth and uh, just new facilities. Uh, everything just seemed brand new. And this campus, of course, did not exist uh, back in the Fred Flintstone era. And uh, what a beautiful campus it is. It's amazing what you've made of this, what seemed to be a small space, but you've made it into a gorgeous campus and a real, uh, a place where students really feel at home. And the same can be said of the Homestead campus and the, the Wolfson campus and the North campus and the medical campus. And I don't, I'm gonna be leaving out many campuses because uh, it is a, a whole community. And I am so proud, uh, every time I get invited to come to, uh, to Miami-Dade College, I do feel right at home. So Joe, it's always great to work with you. He's the, uh, the guy who strong arms us in, in Congress, along with Vicki, that helps us do the, the right things and make sure that we get the funding uh, for Miami-Dade College. And just recently, along with our good friend, Senator Bill Nelson, we were able to uh, uh, to do some good work for the Wolfson campus. There's a, uh, there was a land uh, that is owned by the uh, Bureau of Prisons, but Miami-Dade 
college, Wolfson Campus needed that room to expand its classroom area. So we made a, a convoluted uh, land swap that took us a while to do, but uh, we were able to do it, and I just can't wait to do uh, that. Uh, those first shovels in the ground, Joe. You make sure that I'm that I'm there, and uh, it's a pleasure to see you, old friend. We started together at the Miami Dade uh, uh, doctoral program. He graduated on time. It took me a little while to get my doctorate, but uh, finally did it. And uh, it's thanks to uh, to Miami Dade College that I was able to do it. Yeah, I got the degree from the University of Miami, but at that time it was a, a dual enrollment with uh, for the uh, the folks at Miami Dade College. In Miami Dade College, the students and the faculty and the staff they're always thinking outside the box, and it become and it, it and I think it. It, it, that becomes a reality because of the stimulation that the teachers get from the imagination of the students. And we certainly feel that in the room tonight as all of you new officers and inductees to this, uh, to this wonderful society. And I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to be here with you tonight to celebrate such a meaningful event. Thank you for letting me be a part of that. And tonight's uh, a ceremony that uh, we just saw into uh, Kappa Delta Pi is, uh, is something that you will remember forever. It's an international honor society for education and it truly merits uh, celebration and I see that we're gonna have a big bash after I speak and I know I'm the thing that's going, I'm the person who's gonna keep you from, from that uh, wonderful catering uh, service so I will keep my remarks uh, short. But as Susan uh, pointed out in that, that gracious introduction, I am a, a former educator, a former Florida certified teacher, and I know the motivation and dedication that that profession requires. And uh, I appreciate the uh, inspiration that has driven each and every one of you students to pursue such a noble calling. And I congratulate you for taking another step toward uh, your future tonight through your induction into this uh, great uh, honor society. And I know that the path for, for many of you has uh, probably been a difficult one. You come from all walks of life, um, different family structures, different uh, economic situations, but uh, uh, you've, you've come very far. And uh, it's thanks to the great education that Miami-Dade College offers you through the fine professors and, uh, and deans that you have here and I know that they are your, your, your guides and, and, your, and your leaders. And I also know that soon you will find that the, the life of, of a teacher is not any easier than it is of being a student. Uh, there are many long days and essential lesson planning, which takes forever, and many parent meetings and after school activities, but uh, the results are, are always worthwhile. I have done many wonderful things in my life, but one of the most rewarding has been uh, being an educator. And uh, while I cannot tell you what the future holds for, for each and every one of you, I can say that it will be an exciting journey uh, if you make it so. Uh, being an educator, being a teacher is one of the most uh, fascinating uh, professions. And, and like I said, it is a noble calling. That usually means you don't get paid enough. And that's, uh, that's about right. Uh, but uh, know that you're not going to, to be alone as you go forward. All of the people who have been with you until now will support you in, in your future endeavors. And I see many uh, wonderful family members, uh, the moms and dads, and los abuelos, y los tíos, and, and uh, siblings. And, and let's give them a hand, too, because they're very important part of And you'll be glad to have them on the day that you are. Uh, completely entrusted with your first students in your first class and uh, that first class will be more than just a, a landmark event for you it will be a, a crossroads and uh, uh, every every teacher that you've encountered has made a, a contribution uh, to your education and uh, and each of you whatever profession you you go into and I hope it's it's, it's education you're gonna make a a personal commitment and investment in the people with whom you come in contact with, whether it's your students or whether it's your a sales representative or whoever is your supervisor or your coworker. But uh, being a teacher and, and uh, being involved in education, uh, it is such a, a, a special uh, profession because you see 
uh, students uh, develop and grow uh, from enthusiastic young people into intelligent and uh, respected members of, of our society and our community. Uh, what an incredible reward that is. And it's hard to put a, uh, a monetary value on that. Uh, uh, and again, that means you don't get paid enough when I hear that. <laughs> but uh, the pursuit of knowledge is, is never ending. It's a worthy goal, it's a wonderful journey, and it's one that uh, I hope that you will instill in, uh, in your children. I see one of your officers, uh, where are you? With the, with the little girl, she's several, yes, wonderful. So you already know, already know what it is to be an educator and, and, a, and a role model. And yeah, you will um, celebrate their greatest achievement with, uh, with them and will help them learn uh, from their mistakes, because they will make many of them, because you did as well, and I do each and every day. But uh, we learn from those mistakes, and we build from those, and uh, uh, we can't be disheartened by the, the stumbling blocks and the challenges and the obstacles and the mistakes that we all make. We're all human, but we need to use them as an opportunity to better ourselves and become uh, better, better stewards of our environment, uh, better members of our community, uh, better uh, inhabitants of, of this great planet we call home. And uh, there are few more selfless goals than, than working to educate our, our nation's children. And the, the proud members of, of this honor society, Kappa Delta Pi, uh, you understand this. And tonight you deserve great congratulations for all of your hard work in making yourselves uh, a part of, uh, of this great organization. But with this honor comes uh, great responsibility. And soon it'll be your turn uh, to go out into the world and, and to make a difference. And the wisdom that you gain through your education here at Miami-Dade College will be indispensable to all of us here in our community uh, and to our nation as you forge uh, a new way for the new generation. And many of you as moms and dads are, are already doing that. I know that each and every one of you is going to make a difference in Miami-Dade College, in Miami-Dade County, in the state of Florida, and in our wonderful country, and indeed uh, in the globe. Your desire to learn, to question, uh, to reason, uh, to not, not to compromise your, your basic principles is, is so important. And uh, your future students will test you, and you will discover your strengths and uh, overcome your faults. And as, as each one of you takes this, this further step on this uh, road of life, you will know that there's, uh, that is a great journey, and that is uh, that is the joy of it. That it is a, that it is a journey, as we know from all of these uh, sayings that we have all around us. It's not a destination, but it is a journey, a journey of uh, of self knowledge and self fulfillment. That I hope you use to the betterment of our community. And uh, some challenges will certainly be harder than others, but uh, I hope that you never falter. I hope that you use the great education that you have here at Miami-Dade College, uh, the great education and the love and the respect that you get from your family members and from your loved ones to, to uh, build on that and uh, to be able to take on any challenge, no matter how difficult uh, it may be, because uh, we all must respect the power of knowledge and use that knowledge to the betterment of society uh, the necessity for altruism. Uh, we get to be so self-centered sometimes and we have to look away from ourselves and see what we can do to help others and that's a way of understanding ourselves. That's really a way of, uh, of self-knowledge is when you give up of yourself and uh, lend a hand to someone who is in trouble and uh, know the value of each and every human being with whom you come into contact. And I, I want to congratulate you for, uh, for this great opportunity to be proud of a wonderful tradition, to belong to a, a great organization like Kappa Delta Pi, and especially this Alpha Delta Zeta chapter. And again, congratulations, and I know I'm not going to do a good job with all of your names, but uh, Jahangir Akhtar, Marisol Amaro, Marilis Baluja, Roxana Chavez, Kristen Cruz Fajardo, Ibis de la Fe, Magari Enriquez, Annie Examat, Francis Fraser, forgive me if I don't say it right, Danielle Harard, uh, Janet Herrera, uh, Jay, Jay Ashiri, 
uh, Narain, Enrique Nodal, Gabriel Padrón, Stephanie Papili, Rosa Reyes, Paulín Ríos, Raquel Chifrin, and Luz Torres. Felicidades a todos. Congratulations. Thank you. established our own chapter of Becca's Closet, which allows young children, or young women, to attend proms and other social events alongside their peers when they may not have had the opportunity. Thank you again. I'm sure with our newest members, we will continue to grow and excel. Thank you so much. We have a wonderful reception just outside the hall, down in room 401. Please come and join us and partake. In a little 